friend of mine told me this years ago and I didn't quite understand it. And he said, there's three powers at work in the world. Just three. He said, there's God and then there's the enemy of God and then there's your choice. And he said, and the greatest of those is your choice. Because God limits Himself to your decision to follow Him. God is all-powerful and almighty, but He is not to blame for our life if we don't follow. In Deuteronomy, on the screen, 30, verse 30, chapter 30, verse 19. We'll get to Ephesians in just a moment. Moses is speaking this word. He said, This day I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Now choose life. So that you and your children <clears throat> may live. Does that sound like a God that wants to condemn us? No, He said, I set these before you. Choices. Life or death. But I want you to choose life. So that, you're, so that you can live, your children can live, those influ influenced by you and around you can live and not die. Because if one man surrenders, there is a ripple effect all over the place because one man decides he will be different than the crowd. He will be different than everybody else. He's going to lay down his life and live for Jesus. There's an expectation to live differently. I want us to read in, Gen uh, in, in Ephesians 4. Starting in verse 17 and we'll read to the... To the <coughs> Verse 21. I'm sorry. Ephesians 4. I'm, I'm looking at the wrong chapter here. Ephesians 4, verse 17. We'll read I get done. Okay? <laughs> this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility or the foolishness of their mind, having their understandings darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness or impurity, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard Him and have been taught by Him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you may put on the new man, which is created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore put away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stood still Still no more, no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt proceed out of your mouth, no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, and clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. And then in verse 1, therefore be imitators of God as dear children. The Apostle Paul is speaking to a group of people, and he's basically telling them this, you once were all of these things. You once were someone that lied. You once were, may have been someone who lived with a hardened heart. You may have once had a calloused heart and gave yourself over to all types of impurity. You may have once been a liar. You lied to your neighbors, your family, your friends, and other people that cared about you. You may have once been an angry person and gave, your, and gave the devil a complete access into your life. You have, may have once been a thief but now someone that did not work with their hands. You may have once been a corrupt person with corrupt talk, talking garbage. 
You may have once been a person that destroyed rather than built. You may have once been a taker instead of a giver. You may have once been full of bitterness and anger and insult and slander. That's what this, this chapter is about. We may have once been inconsiderate of others and unforgiving of each other and holding grudges against each other. But he said, you've come into something different. You come into something different and that changes the heart. This isn't, genuine Christianity isn't prop me up to, uh, to attend church. It isn't just lifting our hands, though I love to lift them, but it's lifting our hearts before God and saying, I want to be holy. I want to be like Jesus. I want my life to look like Him. I want the angels of heaven to know that I am a servant of the Most High God. I want them to come to minister to me, not just to hold me up when I'm trying to sin. We need to have an attitude that says, how close can I get to Jesus? How, how, how close can I walk in the light as He is in the light? How many people can I genuinely reach, and I don't mean just bring them to church, but genuinely reach, I mean touch their life and then set an example for them to walk by this standard? It says in chapter 5, verse 8, For we were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the light results in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Discerning what is pleasing to the Lord. We need to please Him. There's, there's a theology out there that we already please Him. Well, then let's take this verse out. Listen, when God looks at my life, He sees Jesus. And He sees Jesus only because of the faith that I have in Christ. And so that pleases Him that I have that faith in Christ and that righteousness that He has been imputed to me, but I still have to, with my lifestyle, want to be pleasing to Him. No more than a father wants his daughters and his sons to do good, to try their best. I remember coming home from school and showing mom report cards that had C's and D's, but they didn't have F's. And I couldn't understand why she wasn't happy. I passed. I'm serious. I remember the conversation. I remember where I was sitting. You could have done better. The Lord still loves us. But He looks at us because He invested His Holy Spirit in our life and said, you can do better. 